is Kaipacha with another weekly Pele report on June 6th of 2018. The moon is in Pisces and we have a, a perfect, I mean yesterday was the perfect sun conjunct Mercury, but you know Mercury is hiding behind that sun in a direct alignment. Mercury, sun, earth very powerful time and it happens to be square to Neptune and the moon the moon over there in Pisces and tomorrow get ready for a wild weekend because tomorrow the moon goes into Aries okay she conjuncts with Chiron all right and you know through the weekend squares Saturn on Saturday squares Pluto okay black moon Lilith Venus on Sunday, she conjoins with Uranus and squares Mars. I mean, <laughs> oh my God. It's, it's going to be a wild ride, particularly because the bigger overall influence is that Mars is conjunct the south node of the moon, and that's going on all week. And it's the first of three conjunctions because Mars is going to go retrograde. This is part of a wild summer. That's going on, and I'm going to talk, uh, you know, a lot more about that. But that exact conjunction is tomorrow, okay? And tomorrow Venus is exactly opposite Black Moon Lilith. So we've just got a whole bunch of aspects going on here this weekend. By Sunday, the Moon does move into Taurus. Like I said, she, you know, conjuncts with Uranus and uh, trines Saturn on Sunday, and then on Tuesday. Mercury moves into Cancer. I'll tell you, Mercury is cruising along at two to three degrees a day. I mean, wow. It, it, it is super powerful time, the Sun-Mercury conjunction traveling together. Yeah, just really a super powerful time. If you've been watching the Paley Report for a long time, you may remember that I've been here before. That's the No Hands Bridge. I'm on the American River up here in Auburn, California. And just look, I mean, take a shot of this water, man. I don't know if you can see how beautiful, clean, and clear that is. I'm just going to sit here and watch the river flow for a little while. <laughs> Let me find a place to sit down, look at the camera, and talk some more. Okay. Okay, where do I want to start today? I tell you what, this could be an hour-long Pele report. There's so much happening. I'm sure you're feeling it. This is an intense time. I mean, because really, if you, if you use orbs enough, okay, Mars is coming into this conjunction with the south node of the moon and still square Uranus at the early degrees of Taurus, but then also squaring Jupiter you know, in the middle of Scorpio. So even though Uranus and Jupiter are not technically in opposition, when they're both in square to Mars, it's just like really, and this summer is going to just like really be so transformative, so explosive, so powerful that, you know, <clears throat> there's a lot to talk about. <laughs> I just did a, uh, uh, a webinar with the Astrology Hub yesterday and I will be teaching a month-long course starting June 12th with them. There, I'll put a link in the notes if you want to join that. I also plan on doing what we're calling the Summer of Love okay, uh, course with the New Paradigm Astrology, all the Dream Team, Maurice Fernandez and Soul, okay, and Tim and Christina, okay, and Ari. I mean, we're, we're all going to be getting together. Jules, you know, from down down under, is, we're all going to be talking about different aspects, elements of you know this whole dynamic that's happening. Venus will be coming in to oppose Mars, and the eclipses. Are, you know, we got these three eclipses happening in July, and it's just like, woo! Hold on to your hats. This is just the beginning. <laughs> and how does it start? <clears throat> how does the beginning start? It's already started, as you can feel. Mars went into Aquarius a few weeks ago. 
okay, and squared Uranus, and the volcanoes began to blow, just like the mantra for this week, okay, that's like the Kundalini is rising. What is Mars? Mars is that fiery, dynamic, masculine principle that wants to erupt. Yeah. And so we can all be, and then when it comes into this conjunction with the south node of the moon, we need to discuss the south node of the moon because the moon has to do with the subconscious. And the south node of the moon, okay, K2 in Vedic astrology is actually looked at as kind of like evil, dark, Okay, there's, yeah, it's this subconscious, uncontrollable uh, conditioning, patterning, karma from the past, okay, of how we have possibly abused, misused, or not been aware of, and not consciously directed our masculine energy, our sexual force, our self-interest. I mean, this is all about greed and money and I, me, my, and it's just like... Oh man, and when it squares, you know, Uranus, and we've got this Sun Mercury conjunction, Mercury and Uranus both having to do with the nervous system. It's like we are tight, tight rope. I think of the tightrope walkers. We're all walking on that tightrope right now, you know. And all it takes, you know, like a, you know, like, like the string of a violin or a guitar, you know, is just like one pluck from Creator, <laughs> and we're off <laughs> into the river. <laughs> oh my God. So what, you know, what does it, how does this, you know, uh, reflect on us personally and individually? I mean, I'm, I'm going to just, I, obviously you need to look at where it falls in your natal birth chart. You are your own best astrologer because you can kind of really look and, and personalize this energy. But I'm going to give this general, you know, this general take just about the masculine and the feminine because Venus is very powerful now. She's in Cancer and Cancer wants emotional connection and nurturing. Okay, you know, and, 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 and like really bonding, you know, it's mother-child kind of energy. It's like we want to be nourished emotionally in water. And at the same time, we've got this Mars in Aquarius. I mean, Cancer to Aquarius is, you know, quincunx, 150 degrees. It is not a pleasant, okay, aspect. It has to do with adjustment. We're really adjusting okay, the masculine and feminine. And like I said, we've got Venus in opposition to Lilith, okay? So we've got this really where we can really see consciously, because this is what Aquarius is all about, okay? South Node in Aquarius, Mars in Aquarius is stepping outside our conditioning, our past, the norm, the convention, okay, to really observe ourselves from our witness, from our third eye. What am I doing, really, really? And so I can say this has so much to do with the right and wrong use of sexuality. Mars is that sexual force, okay? That, one, that number one, the masculine force wants freedom, independence, to be in still, clean, open space, just like whoosh, we are all masculine and feminine. There's all, we all have this part of us that just wants to be free. I just wanna be free. And if it wasn't for the feminine, it could not. <laughs> because the feminine wants connection. Venus, okay, you know, Venus rules Libra, partnership, relationship, connection, and, and, and union. So we have this, you know, we have these polarities always playing out with each other. But right now, Mars is on stage. Mars is strong. Aquarius is about rebellion and revolution, okay, and the future. Okay, and, and shooting off into outer space or just, you know, getting on the internet and on the screen and just like, you know, going, you know, global. Okay, nothing personal. Let's not get too personal here. There's, you know, Aquarius is not personal kind of energy. It's very much about the collective consciousness. Yeah. And so when we have this, you know, energy of Mars conjunct the south node of the moon. Okay. We're going to all be dealing with, and this is like really going on all summer. What is the right and the wrong use? I mean, okay, we can just look at it. Number one, the masculine, okay, you know, really wants, okay, to feel itself, 
okay, to, to feel the power, to feel the potency, okay, it wants to penetrate. It wants to control. It wants to, like, really bring and, like, move mountains, okay, you know, spread legs, whatever it takes. It's like, you know what, you know, it is the phallic force that wants to, you know, insert, yeah, itself into this physical world. So we could say that, you know, if that goes too far or goes too extreme, and Aquarius is the sign of extremes, okay, it can take the feminine, okay, and hit and run. Yes, insert, abandon. Just like come and go. Just like use, objectify as a physical, you know, because it's just about this physical union and physical manifestation and just like... Yeah, so you know this can really create a lot of pain, a lot of suffering, a lot of hurt, a lot of breakups in relationships and things like that. Yes, we can look at the wrong use of the feminine. Okay, you know, you know, and this feminine energy is like, okay, I know you, I know what you want, I know that the masculine needs connection. Otherwise, it's an asteroid or a, a satellite out in space, <laughs> especially with Aquarius, alienated, isolated, lonely, disconnected. So the masculine is seeking connection through the physical and the feminine, okay, you know, has this juice, okay, has this life force, has this watery element, has this earth element, Venus, the ruler of Taurus, yeah. So there can be this seductive energy. There can be this, you know, this use of that energy. Okay, you know, and this is like Kali. Yeah, and, and you know, I mean, and also Shiva. You know, we just look at this life force, the Kundalini force. Ultimately, it boils down to Pluto. And Pluto, the ruler of Scorpio, and Jupiter and Scorpio, big life force right now. Okay, and it can create or destroy. And we really are becoming more conscious, okay, and more able and capable, and it becomes necessary to become more responsible. What are we creating and what are we destroying? <laughs> and we can destroy each other <laughs> or we can unite and create with each other, okay, because, you know, the feminine has been wounded, we know, through the patriarchy. And she, when she feels abandoned or used or disrespected, she can like really come out in her Kali form, okay, you know, and, you know, chop off, yeah, you know, the balls of the masculine, right, you know, humble that masculine, use that, you know, use that energy, you know, in a, you know, in a, in a space to destroy more than create. We really have to see fundamentally it's about babies. It's about procreation. Yeah, this is a super, this is the life force we're talking about. This isn't just about parties and casual connection and da 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 you know? I mean, so it's, you know, it's like as we mature and grow, you know, there becomes more of this awareness and more of, and with awareness comes responsibility and it's just like, wow. So it's all really coming up now Okay, because Mars is on that south node of the moon and it's bringing up this, you know, all of our past lives. The, the, the nodes have to do with our past life activities. It's all of the karma that we're bringing in that we are here to deal with. So it's like we're all getting a plateful of, oh, look at this. Look where you are out of integrity. Look where you're in integrity. Look where your strength is. Okay, look where you have been abusive. Look where you are angry. Look at, I mean, it's just like, shh. So we can really be having these full plates and, and kind of boiling over. And that's what kind of what this mantra, you know, this week is about, you know, is this, you know, I feel the energy rising like a volcano I could blow. My job as a conscious, loving person is to heal, not hurt those I know. Like I say, this can be very destructive or it can be very creative. 
And I'd say the big thing happening now is the Sun conjunct Mercury coming through Gemini next week. Okay, we're going to be having a new moon in Gemini. And this just all has to do with conscious Mercury communication Gemini. The tendency can be to just, like I say, abruptly, okay, forge new, you know, just go impulsively into new relationships, conditions, and situations, okay, you know, just to like release and blow, right, and just like, ah, I, you know, I can't take, I can't take all the inner pressure, I've got to just like, yeah, and unconsciously go there, or it can also be to like, take off, abandon, excarnate, this is too painful, too mushy, too gushy, too chaotic. Okay, you know, the subconscious is chaos, it's lunacy. Yeah, south node of the moon has to do with, you know, these lunar forces that are just like, you know, our inner child that's like got tantrums and memories and, you know, of abandonment and woundedness and, and just like, we can react. Mars also reacts, not just acts. So there can also be this tendency, like, you know, if I have been hurt, wounded, abandoned, or I've got these issues, I can act with revenge, you know, and anger, and be, you know, amazingly destructive and hurt a lot of people. This is a time where it's not just volcanoes. I mean, the last I heard, the volcano in Guatemala wiped out 40 people, okay? And it's a huge, massive, it's very different than Pele out in Hawaii. You know, that's bubbling away and people have time to move. But in Guatemala, lava's going down more than 100 miles an hour. Rushing down that mountain. And we may see, as Uranus moves further into Taurus, the whole ring of fire could possibly light up. Yeah, we're looking at Mother Earth really speaking to us. And it is a reflection. She is a reflection of our human consciousness. Yeah, it's like we are connected, baby, with Gaia. Like it or not, conscious or not, it's like, yeah, you know, it's like we, you know, we create these planets and stars as mirrors and Gaia is a big mirror. And it's just like, you know what, this, you know, this lava needs to come up. This primal, primal, primal energy that is, you know, unconsciously driven and just like, we are now mature enough as a human species, as a race, okay, to deal with this energy in a more conscious way than we have ever done in the far distant past. So it's very beautiful at one point, right? It's very beautiful that we're going through this birthing process, okay, into a new paradigm. And it involves a lot of consciousness, which involves a lot of control and a lot of self-discipline. It's beautiful to have Pluto and Saturn happening up here in Capricorn, you know, to like hold this ship down so we don't just like explode or take off or, you know, be like rocket ships heading out to the moon. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, we are getting anchored now and this Venus in Cancer is very beautiful and it's very soft and it's wanting to, you know, wanting to really, you know, have this healing process happen because this is is where the north node of the moon, you know, where we're going to have our eclipses, okay, you know, the sun's going to be coming into Leo, and like I said, you know, Venus is going into Leo early next week, okay, it's just, you know, this is really, um, well, Leo's a fire sign, so I can see it probably heating up before it cools down, but one way or the other, you know, we also want to just look at, like I say, I could go on about this forever, the different stages of life, the different ages that we are. It's very different for, you know, teenagers than it is for people in their 20s, in their 30s, in their 40s, in their 50s, in their 60s. We all manage and we've all got different consciousness, particularly after the Saturn return, particularly after the midlife crisis at 42. Okay, you know, so there's like these big, you know, times. There are natural rhythms in the natural, uh, you know, evolutionary processes, you know, of the aging process of the human being. So there's a time to be wild and rebel and just like open. And then there's a time to like see that, okay, and maybe rebel against myself. 
Mars goes retrograde, okay, from June 25th to August 27th. That's rebelling against myself. Like, you know, I see, I see what I've done. I see where I've been. I see what, you know, I've been unconscious about. And I, I'm, I'm going to, instead of, you know, breaking free and breaking out of this or that relationship, business partnership, you know, uh, corporation, whatever, family, I'm going to like, you know, rebel against, oh, okay, you know, that pattern, <laughs> that conditioning, that, you know, unconscious animal instinct, you know, that anger. I'm, and, and so it's really a powerful summer, okay, of growth and evolution. I hope you can join me at New Paradigm Astrology, the, uh, you know, the Dream Team, Astrology Hub. Astrology is just like so freaking awesome. You got to get into it, man. The, I, I, this is the renaissance of astrology because Aquarius rules astrology. Mars is happening in astrology, you know, in, in Aquarius. And it's just like, astrology just like brings so much clarity, objective understanding. I, it is the witness, the observer. It's just like, go for it. The world needs more astrologers and that could be you. <laughs> Do my little plug <laughs> this week for astrology. Oh my God. So, you know, I mean, that's enough, man. You know, more to come. It's always going on. It's always going on. You know, uh, one more time. I feel the energy rising. Like a volcano, I could blow. But my job as a conscious, loving person is to heal, not hurt those I know. Be gentle on yourself, be gentle on the other, your intimate partners more specifically, and your friends and associates, Aquarius. Just be gentle with each other. Namaste, aloha. So much love.